Your book, Authoring Your Life, differs from other self-help books in not offering prescriptions. Why is that? Well, it doesn't offer prescriptions because prescriptions aren't terribly helpful to uh, help succeed in adult life. Uh, everyone's life is different, everyone has different challenges, everyone responds differently to those challenges. What's important is for us to figure out the tension between what other people want from us and what we want for ourselves, uh, and to figure out how to achieve what we want for ourselves. The participants in my study who were able to do that were much better able to meet life's challenges uh, and feel less stressed about that process because they were clear on what they wanted. So what I hope this book will do is help readers see a variety of ways to deal with life's challenges and to develop their own unique internal voices to do so. How would you like readers to use this book? And what will they derive from it? Well, I hope readers will read the stories to uh, recognize that many people are dealing with some of the challenges they're facing, uh, that people deal with them in different ways. I hope readers will find some connections between their story and the stories in the book. I hope they'll find some inspiration uh, by seeing how people work through various problems. I mean, one of the unique aspects of this book is that because it's based on 20 plus years of stories from the same people, uh, it's more like a movie than it is a snapshot. You can hear people talk about issues that they encountered uh, at the time and then hear their reflections on them years later as to how things worked out or how they would have done something differently. Uh, something that is hard to acquire by just talking to a person once or, or even with your friends who you talk with but perhaps not over that many years. Uh, so I'm hoping that readers will find ideas in here about how to think about their own lives more productively. Uh, the, the book has maps in it of the various journeys that participants have taken, and so readers could draw their own maps for where they are, uh, where they might like to go. Uh, there are stories in the book about how to be a good partner for yourself, uh, about how to find other people to be good partners, and how to coach them on how to stay on the back of your bike. Uh, and how to be a good partner for other people. So there are all kinds of things in the book that I hope will help people face life's challenges and also find more productive relationships with other people around them. Can you outline for us the theory of self-authorship that informs this book? Well, the theory of self-authorship that's in this book is a combination of all the stories that the longitudinal participants have told over the last 20 years. And while there are differences for each person, the details uh, are different for each person's life, there are three main phases that all of them reported experiencing. Uh, the first of those is following external formulas. When they came to college, the majority of them followed the advice of authorities, people they trusted, their parents, teachers, other adults in their lives, to figure out what to believe, uh, what to value, and how to be successful in life. And that's a pretty typical response, I think, to childhood and adolescent upbringing. The point at which uh, we all discover that we need to include our own voices in what we know, how we see ourselves, how we engage in relationships, is the beginning of the second phase that I've called the crossroads. Uh, when participants encountered, sometimes in college, sometimes after, uh, the need to develop their own perspectives, this began a period of exploration about what their internal values were. Uh, and this came from uh, experiencing lack of success uh, that came from following external others' expectations or achieving that success and finding out that it wasn't fulfilling. So, uh, for example, some uh, graduates found the ideal job, found out it wasn't so ideal, uh, married uh, the person they thought was going to be wonderful, turned out not to be so wonderful. Uh, in part because they hadn't sorted out what they really wanted. So the crossroads is a time of tension between what others expect of you, what you want for yourself, and trying to really bring that internal voice to the foreground, trying to listen to it, cultivate it, and come to trust it. The third phase is self-authorship, uh, and that is the point at which the internal voice has come forward, has been developed sufficiently to be a compass to guide us uh, throughout our lives. Um, the uh, folks who developed self-authorship still paid close attention to uh, external others' expectations and needs, but they balanced those with their own internal expectations and needs, 
and thus they were better able to participate in authentic relationships. They were better able to make good decisions that worked for them and also worked for important others around them. So what I hope readers will be able to do as they read about these journeys uh, and their differences with different people is to identify with some of these challenges, uh, see how other people have worked through these challenges, uh, get some inspiration for how to address them, uh, there's also a section of the book that invites readers to think about external formulas that may exist in their own lives, to think about whether those are productive or not, to think about crossroads experiences that they may have had or are having, and how they might come through those with a better sense of their internal voice. Uh, and so I'm hopeful that by reading these stories, by, by working through um, their own uh, life experiences, that readers will come away with a better understanding of their own development and perhaps some ways to, um, to move forward in ways that are productive. Your book also discusses the roles that spouses, family members, managers at work, and others can play in the self-authorship of individuals. What roles can they play and should we all be looking out for outside support on our journeys throughout life? Well, by combining all the stories that the participants have told me over the years and the kinds of things that they felt helped them along in their journeys, I've come to the notion of learning partnerships. Uh, I think about those like riding a tandem bicycle. So the person on the front is the captain, that person directs the journey. The person on the back is called the stoker, that person pedals, provides fuel for the journey, and also provides some guidance from the back seat. Typically, in childhood and adolescence, and sometimes even later, uh, the child or the adolescent is on the back of the bike, and the parent, the teacher, are on the front. Uh, and there comes a time when they need to change positions, and the young person needs to get on the front and take responsibility for their own journey. At least at college, that should be happening. And so learning partnerships are a way to do that. They're a way for those of us who are teachers or parents or mentors of some kind to get on the back seat of the bike to provide guidance but yet encourage the person on the front to direct their own journey. And our primary role as partners is really to help that person develop their internal voice. And we can do that by respecting their perspectives, by encouraging them to think through issues for themselves, uh, avoiding giving advice and saying here's what I think you should do and instead uh, saying what are the issues with that and, and helping the person really sort through their own feelings about it and their own values uh, so that they can come to trust their judgments and we can suggest that they can make trustworthy judgments. Uh, and, and yes, I think we all should be looking for that outside support. Uh, even people who are self-authored uh, still need good learning partners uh, because the challenges of adult life uh, continue regardless of where you are on the journey. Uh, and even if you've reached self-authorship, you still have lots of life's challenges to deal with. And the more partners we have that help us think through our problems, uh, clarify how we feel about them and how we feel about ourselves and what we believe, uh, the better we'll be able to deal with life's challenges with, with less stress uh, and be able to move forward productively. So we all ought to be looking for those partners to promote our own development. Uh, we all ought to be trying to be good partners to the other people around us, whether that's our family, our friends, our spouses. Um, if we are teachers or employers, the people that we are teaching or who are working with us. Uh, people who move forward towards self-authorship and develop their internal voices are better able to participate in authentic relationships. They're better able to meet life's challenges, uh, to focus on what they can control, and to worry less about what they can't. So good partnerships are beneficial to all of us.